I guess we start the meeting. Uh, what is it? Uh, Six forty-seven. Okay. With the pledge of allegiance. Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. I guess we'll do roll call. Right. Call to order. Roll call. Ricardo Uribe. Uribe. Present. Ulises Cardenas. Present. Alex Peroni. Present. Mary Salazar. Present. All present. Okay. Approval of the agenda. Any public comments? Non antidote items? Note not to exceed three minutes. This is the time for the public to address the Planning Commission on any items not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. The chairperson will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the Planning Commission meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. If the item you wish to comment is on is a closed session, or consent item, please comment now. The Planning Commission is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussion, discussion items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of this agenda, we will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the Planning Commission. Yes, I'm going to make a motion to approve it. Because we didn't. Okay. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second, I'll second that. Ulises Cardenas, okay. We'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Thank you. Okay, so approve. Approval, uh, number one, approval of the regular Planning Commission minutes for February 12, 2018. So. So move. We move to. Uh -huh. Alex Peroni, any second? Second. Ulises Cardenas, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And approved, so approved. Number two, tentative parcel map waiver UA 2017-18. The applicant is the applicant is requesting approval of the city of a tentative parcel map waiver to create two parcels. Didn't have this one? Proposed, proposed parcel one is approximately 0.74 acres in size and contains an existing L-shaped building. Parcel two is approximately 0.96 acres in size and contains an existing building. The property is located at 101 Hacienda Drive. Presentation, Ralph Modales. Chairperson, uh, commissioners, uh, this item was presented at the last meeting in it was, um, at that time, it was directed to, for it to be brought back. So basically, this is a piece of parcel about uh, one and a half a, uh, acres of land, and the owner is interested in uh, creating two parcels on, on the property. It is um, exempt from CEQA, and uh, at that point, that it was uh, brought out to the uh, uh, commissioners. Uh, the location is right behind uh, Robinson Ford. It's an hacienda in the corner of Hacienda. It's, I think it's Caroni. And uh, so uh, you have Robinson Ford on the, on the north side. You, and on the south, you have Fulpolis and uh, I forget what the other. Uh, Forever 21, I think it is, which is a retail store. So at this point, uh, basically what the owner is requesting is, is for the uh, dividing of, of the lot into two sections. I know that one of the questions that was brought out at that time is what the intention of the owner, uh, what his intentions are, and basically he has no uh, uh, intention as far as he doesn't have any potential uh, buyers uh, or does he have any potential business that will go in there so he wants uh, 
the, the uh, subdividing of his property so that uh, that he can start working either to sell part of it and then work on, on, on the other parcel um, and, and try to get some tenants in there. So he really doesn't have any uh, major uh, plans on the property except for the division of the, of the lot. Okay. Any questions? Commissioners? Any questions, commissioners? No. I uh, have a little concern. First, you know, the recommendation is to, to hold a public hearing. And it's recommendations from staff. And uh, the other uh, concern I have uh, is that this is the second meeting we have for the same item. And the developer owner is not here. So uh, when you do something like that, I guess first you show some interest in coming that you want to do something like that. And also it gives an opportunity to every commissioner to get a little feel for what, he's, what his plans are. Uh, I have a problem with that, uh, Ralph. And again, we're supposed to hold a public hearing. And that's one of the recommendations. And the, again, the owner or developer is not here for that. So uh, I'm a little uncomfortable with, uh, with this item. I think the, at the last meeting we had a public hearing on it, and it was just continued, if I'm not mistaken. And it was uh, continued for the, the same reasons. Yeah. The, he wasn't here. Yeah. You know, we like to see and, again, have a feel for what the developer, the intentions are uh, to support something like this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, is the second meeting. He sends a letter, uh, and you know, we're, we're, uh, one of the recommendations is to hold a public uh, meeting. So how can you, if the developer developer's not here, uh, it's uh, it's a little awkward. You understand what I'm telling you because it's your recommendation to hold a public hearing and solicit and recommend approval of tentative. Uh, parcel mat waiver resolution. So, how can you uh, solicit input from the developer or, or the owner of that project? He's not here. And uh, he sends a letter. Like, basically, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. He didn't make it last time, so that's my feeling for the uh, for this item. It's not... Uh, well, ba basically, the... the, the I, I don't know whether in a public hearing the owner has uh, the property has to be here. My understanding of public hearing is to get comments from the public uh, for those that are against the the, the uh, dividing of, of the parcel, and so they can share the, their concerns that they may have, or they for the the, the division of, of the of the parcel, and uh, so that we can continue. There, there is no project at this point that, that uh, they're requesting. All, it, all they're asking for is the subdivision of, of the parcel and to create two parcels. That way he can move forward. And I'm sure at the time that he gets a project uh, uh, to come in, then at that time, I'm sure that he would be more than willing to come forward to explain what project he has so that, uh, that if there was any questions, concerns, or even comments in regards to that, then that could be made at that time. I, I kind of feel that that would be the important moment to have the, the owner here. Right now, all he's asking is, hey, let me uh, uh, divide my property and so that possibly I can do something more attractive in, in trying to either bring somebody in or to sell part of it and then uh, to a potential developer that wants to construct on it. Um, I don't see a, a, any, any issues with, with the public hearing. Then why give a recommendation to hold a public hearing for input? And then you say a developer uh, doesn't have to be here. You know, in the 12, <coughs> 14 years I've been coming to meetings, uh, I would say 99.7% of the time, the owner developer is present because 
he wants to address any questions are, are going to be asked. The same thing you're, you're saying here, solicit input. And uh, we can't because all we do, we have is a, a letter from the, uh, uh, from the property owner. He wants to subdivide it. And, uh, and I, I understand his intention. He, I believe he's a, he bought that property and the other guy lost it. And he wants to recover his part and sell the other part. Or that's what, what I would figure. But in any case, we don't know. And uh, I think that's why your, your recommendation is to hold a public hearing and uh, solicit input. So uh, do you understand where, where I'm coming from, Rob? Uh, yes and no, because the, like I said before, you know, and, and I repeat myself, that the public hearing is to get input from the public, um, unless someone in the public is, has a has a question or a concern with it, and and and, and again, I, I would I would see where the concern of the planning commission would come in to question the, the developer, the owner of the property, if he was bringing a project forward. He's not bringing a project forward. All he's doing is sub, uh, go again, subdividing the property so that hopefully he'll do something. And, you know, on, on, on my side of the, of the city, you know, I, you know, I kind of see or welcome that only because potentially with a smaller lot, then you could get a potential developer uh, or business person that would want to come in and want to develop a smaller property than having to develop the whole uh, uh, parcel that's there. See, but uh, what, what I see is, okay, you subdivide it, well, and uh, now the proportion of the parking, uh, because once you subdivide it, you know, the other owner can put a fence and say, hey, your cars can't park on my side, uh, unless you have, uh, in the, the way we approve it, okay, the parking's open for everyone. Once you do that, because if you divide it, you know, the, uh, the bank's about 7,000 or more square feet. And uh, if they keep only that uh, parking to the south of it, it won't be sufficient parking. If you count, the uh, the store fronts, you probably don't have sufficient parking as well on the other side. So those are concerns uh, we have because I know that any new construction going up, first thing you guys do is you ask adequate parking. So uh, I don't see that we've addressed that. So. Uh, I, I do see your concern. You have a very valid point on that. What staff did is uh, one of the conditions to the to the uh, dividing of the parcel is that they're going to have to sign. I don't know how well, what the word is, but reciprocal uh, uh, parking agreement, which means that now and that will be put into the the title where, regardless of who buys the other property then that parking will be open for both uh, uh, lots. And uh, that's something that, that's common uh, done. Uh, we did it over on Cole Road with, with the uh, new building that was being built over there. Um, uh, and, and there was one uh, reciprocal uh, uh, agreement there. So the same thing would happen to this one. So uh, we did look into that. There was a, a question that did come up and uh, that was brought before the owner, and that would be one of the conditions to the division of, of the lots. And, and Ralph, there won't be a, a, a fence? There'll be no up? fence, no. That would be one of the No, with the reciprocal I'm sorry. Be, with, no, go ahead. No, no, that would be one of your restrictions on your agreement? That would not, be one of the restrictions because then the both uh, owners, if there would be two owners, then both owners would have the right to use that parking lot. Yeah, well, what my concern was just for uh, um, it, the, the same question that Alex was, uh, Commissioner Aslo was asking, is the, the, the parking. So we, you won't know until you, that you find whoever's going to build, or it's already built, whatever they're going to sell it to, you won't know yet until you get to your committee and say you can 
have this type of business, you still have to have that decision? Or is it going to be whatever business you want to put there? Does it matter what requirements for parking will be? Say it's well, a furniture store. Yeah. You know how you have to have so much parking mm -hmm. or say a medical building. No, the receptive uh, agreement would go into effect with, mm -hmm. with, with the uh, dividing of, of the lots. Uh, any any um, business or project that would come in would have to go through the city, and for the most part, it would go through a project review committee to be reviewed and make sure that it's something that falls under that type of zoning and also would be something if that's what the city wants to, wants mm -hmm. to see. So um, just because it's, it's divided and the owner wants to bring in a business, then he can't just bring any business in without mm -hmm. first having the, the proper review. Right. Okay, because I remember years back when <clears throat> that, that commercial building, I remember I had a couple of people that I did business with, and you couldn't find parking because the IVC was there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the cars were parked right alongside the, the uh, runway, which is very dangerous, you know, has its very narrow yes. streets. And they were all parking wherever they could find parking. I just hate for that to happen where businesses lose their business because they can't find parking because of something, a decision the city made in splitting up the lot, then no business can go there or nobody can do business there. And they come back to the city saying, "Why? Did, whose decision was this? This is a bad decision. Could we not be in any place liable for anything like that, that we help them decide to split up between the, the parcels? Well, the, the situation w will be like I brought out earlier that the agreement that would be signed by both either, well, by the owner at this time, it wouldn't have to be both parties, but by the owner at this time, that in order to get his lot separated or divided, then there would have to be that reciprocal agreement where that section of parking would be used, legally used by both parties. So. You couldn't fence it off. You can't put a block wall in there. You can't separate it from, from the other property because of the agreement that exists there. The other thing, too, is like Commissioner Peroni brought out, is that if a project comes in and a business wants to come in, then one of the things that we look at is the parking. We make sure that for that type of business, there's going to be sufficient parking so that we don't have the situation that was in the past where cars will be parking on, on Scaroni and make it difficult. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would look at that and they would have to come up with the uh, either uh, the, the necessary parking or reduce their project or put some other type of business in there. So when the business opens up and they open a new business at the, at this, the say the L-shaped building, do you automatically give them the business license because you have ample parking spaces? You don't say, well, how many parking spaces do you need? Say they want to do certain office spaces for medical buildings, say a school, a class. That's where they used to be there, a lot of classes. You know, they used to be <coughs> rented out to a lot of schools. Mm -hmm. They were renting, and they never <coughs> had enough parking spaces. That's what I was getting at. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they busted. They busted for the same reason. The parking was a problem. There was not enough parking, so I'm just concerned that we're going to have a way more yeah. of a problem. Because now we're spinning the two buildings, and it's going to be like, you know, and I, don't, I just don't want to see that. I, I kind of see that we, we, right now we have a property that has uh, two buildings in mm -hmm. there. We have the old Bank of America that used to be here, mm -hmm. the IBC building, and then we have the L-shaped uh, commercial suites in there. It, it, it's kind of difficult at this point to say, well, you know, there's not sufficient parking, so we're not going to let anybody in. You're, you're, you're kind of, um, we're kind of working backwards. That, uh -huh. that should have been uh, reviewed at the, at the time. Right. Uh, but we do look at that, and uh, usually because of the square footage that's there, it, it can handle the, the, the parking. Okay. Um, if, if for some reason there isn't sufficient parking for all, the, the, the studios that are there, either two things will happen. One is that uh, the more businesses will not be allowed to go in there because not sufficient parking, or they would have to come up with uh, uh, sufficient parking, either rent across the street or rent from people uh, behind them or, or do something so that the parking would, would uh, be there. 
the dividing of the lot, again, like I said, said before, because of the agreement that's going to be uh, uh, required for them to sign, then you're still going to have the same amount of parking in there for, for the businesses to, so, so to you, be Ralph, able. So, Ralph, you will be stipulating on, on that agreement, the reciprocal, that, that they will encase that businesses, depending on what you can be approved when you do give them the city permits, that if they don't have ample parking for that, they will have to find ample parking in order to suffice the requirements for each business as your requirements for the city are, right? Correct? That, that's correct. Okay, so that's the correct. developer would know that? Yes. Okay. And the reciprocal uh, agreement will be part of, of the okay. separation uh, of the, of the uh, tentative map. Okay. All right. I guess that will be it. That would be my question. I have a question. Coming new, so I'm not sure if it pertains to what we do here, but uh, who, was, who actually uh, decided how to divide this property? The owner did. Okay. My view, and like again, I'm not sure if this is something that pertains to this commission, but why are, do we not have two square properties instead of having one property that bites into the other one? Mm. Unless I'm looking at this map incorrectly. Yeah, it's split like an L shape. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then kind of co comes in at the, is that where the entry level is, the driveway? That's the driving, I guess, the drive, mm -hmm. the drive in, so there'd be an easement into yeah. the other per person's property, correct? Yeah. Well, if you, if you look at that, the line comes in and then it, it, it t sort of uh, jaggers around. And I think at the time, what we're trying to do is, is try to get more parking for the L-shaped oh, building. Seven but again, it, it wouldn't make a difference because regardless of how he divides that property, Still, that parking could be utilized by parcel one as much as it would be utilized like, by parcel two. So, in, in my view, yeah, right now we'll decide and okay, let's say this we'll agree to this and this happens, and then in a couple of years somebody else is going to look at this differently, and what you're trying to do is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. They're not going to come to an agreement to have proper par parking for both sides because you come in, this is my property. I'm buying this property. Why am I going to let somebody use my, my parking space? So, yeah, right now I understand what happens. And maybe, again, being new to this, maybe it's not something that I should really think of in the future. But this is how, the way I see it, this is how you start creating awkward businesses, awkward properties when you cut something like that. Well, you know, the... the the line could be straight. It would still be the same. And, 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 and you're concerned that you have what may happen in the future, and that's the reason you have the, the reciprocal agreement, parking agreement there, and that works almost like an easement. An easement is, is, is a piece of land that it may be, uh, belong to somebody, but for the person that lives in the bank that needs to go through that, Eastman, they have legal rights to drive up and down that easement in order to get from point A to point B. Same thing here with the Pacifico uh, uh, parking. With, with that uh, 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 agreement or covenant going and being uh, uh, recorded in, into the, the uh, title report, then that gives parcel one as well as parcel two the right to park there. So legally, the, the owner of parcel one couldn't come in, or parcel B, uh, two, rather, couldn't come in and say, hey, you can't park in my property. Because that, in, in a sense, you can almost say it's an easement where parcel one has a right to utilize that parking as well as the other one. So it, it's a legal document that, that's there and it stays there uh, uh, forever or until somebody takes it out. So I, I really don't think that whether you leave it the way it is or you make a straight line is going to make a difference because it's still going to carry that reciprocal agreement. I think, I think it is. It'll make a difference. Uh, it will. Because the design is awful. I don't know who put that design together. The, you mm -hmm. say the owner. So I agree with the Commissioner Uribe. Why didn't they do like two squares? No. Why? The way they... Uh, very, the design is not a good one. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, you know, a new person can come in and say, I'm going to buy this property. Yes, and you know, he will argue, hey, you know what? I don't want your people parking on my side. And we'll create a problem. 
So uh, you, you have a lot of flaws, not you, but the person who's trying to do this. That's why it would have been good that the owner, developer, come and explain to us why, why this design, uh, why, uh, why is he wanting to do this? You know, to me, it, this property has a lot more value in one piece. Well, yeah, but it's not up for us to make uh, yeah, that Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah. So, but uh, anyway, the design is a, an awful design. And another question in concern, and this is for our attorney, on, the, um, on any liability, for example, when we change and split these two lots, in case of uh, insurance, insuring the properties, because they know they have to have insurance, who would be, like if something happens in between those two divided, between the two parcels, are we, are there going to be just... There will be no liability on the city's part. We no. require them to indemnify us okay. against okay. anything, that's, and that's, that's one of the conditions of approval. Because it's kind of little, it's kind of mm -hmm. right. it's way uh, difficult for me to kind of, but I just want to make sure on the parking, like I was asking Ralph. I know it's going to be chaos. It was at one time. That's why the previous owner busted, because it was everybody was wanting to get out, and I know they were calling me to ask can I get it on my lease because I don't even have parking for my, my clients, you know, and, you know, stuff like that. So I'm just thinking that I'm hoping that does become some other legal issue. So we'll be okay. Yes. Okay. okay. But, you know, as a, as a commission, it's, it's very important that we do look at our liability as a city. Well, that, that's my big concern. But also we should be looking for seeing any problem that the my yeah. My, my like, like what you said. Yeah. Hey, the tenants there were complaining. Down my store because I don't have an apartment. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's why. So we, uh, I guess, uh, are input also in something like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this developer knows that. I don't think he knows the history of back when, because we've been here forever. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you back 15, 20 years ago what happened there. So it, it wasn't pretty. And you know, it was very sad to see all the, all the tenants that, that the owner had currently at that time couldn't hold on to him because they did have a big grudge over the fact that they didn't have any parking for their clients. Mm -hmm. And they had schools, that's all they were renting out was their two schools, IVC and some English classes and stuff like that, and, and there was not enough parking, unfortunately. And that's what, everything went down from there. So I just, I don't know. I don't know if he's put a, enough thought into that, but I don't know. And Commissioner Salazar, I did want to remind you that, that since this is a public, uh, continued public hearing, the public hearing is still open. Okay. So we would want to ask for any comments from the public before closing it and then making your final decision. Okay. All righty. So any public comments on this item? No? No, I guess not. Nobody's, Nobody's here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, based on, on, on my limited information on this, I'm going by experience versus this specific uh, map in the proposal. Uh, at the end of the day, if an easement will be made, uh, and that easement is obviously uh, contingent upon this uh, lot line adjustment as made part of the uh, title report, then the actual parking should not be an issue because whether property A and property B are sold to Hypothetic, Alex Peroni and Ricardo Uribe, they must share and, and abide by that title report unless one of them signs off against it or they both have to sign off against it. Mm -hmm. That's basically written, quote, unquote, into the property. Uh, but again, I don't have enough information specifically on this property to tell you what the dynamics are. But again, if an easement is made, and Ralph, you can correct me if I'm incorrect on this, um, the, the actual parking lot will need to be shared based on a specific easement. That's correct. Okay, we're ready. I guess I'm going to make a decision. Anybody going to be close our public hearing? Yes, okay, please. We're closing our public hearing. Thank you. Anybody going to make a vote on this?
Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve being, uh, uh, after listening to all the, the statements and uh, for Ralph and uh, knowing a little bit more in a, it's all, uh, the, that it's only to divide the property for a potential developer and uh, it's only basically a subdivision. So I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. To the parcel map and waiver. Commissioner Ardenas to to pass to approve the the split lot. Any seconds? I guess no no second. So it does not pass. Are there any other motions? Are there gonna be any other motions? Any other motions if anybody wants to oppose? Well uh, I would uh, I, I agreed with uh, what Commissioner Uribe said. You know, if the split was uh, not the design, I have trouble with it because, Ralph, they can come back and say, hey, you know what? Well, I own this, so I'm going to build a little more uh, onto this land. Or, you know, uh, we are open to that kind of uh, things in the future. So, uh, I would be, uh, I guess, more willing if I would see it, uh, the design in, in a better, a more portionate way. Not, it looks like they came, they shopped it up like that. So I, I make that motion. A motion to? Uh, for a, a design that would, they're about equally, to square it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're understanding what I'm telling you, no, Ralph? No, I understand what you're okay. what, what you're talking about. Okay, so you know that would be my motion. Uh, and uh, you guys understand what I'm telling you? Right. So your motion is to deny it as presented. Design as presented, and making a motion. Well, and as part of my motion. Because you, you also want to be business friendly and have the, the developer continue, but uh, the design would be uh, uh, split, not uh, the way it's last year. I don't uh, I see it very, I've never seen nothing like that. So uh, I can make a motion like that, correct? Or? I would advise you to make a motion to deny staff's okay, recommendation. So I, I make a then. motion to deny as presented. And we have your comments on the record as to why. Okay. okay. Um, any commissioner second? I second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 So it passed, it passed the denial. So denied the, the item, right? Right. Did all four vote for the, for the denial? No, it was three that denied it. You, you, you weren't in favor, no? No. Okay, thank you. So, so we continue to discussion items, number three. Go to item number three. Number three, yes. Mixed use zoning in downtown area. Commissioner Alex? Well, this is a, in our last meeting, we uh, encouraged you to put this on. Mm -hmm. on the agenda because I think as we uh, start moving forward and trying to create uh, more prosperity for our downtown and, and creating jobs, I think the mixed use would be a, a terrific uh, ideal right now to, to sprawl development because our development has been nothing in the downtown and this will be something good and knowing that J.C. Penney's is leaving and you have a building that's going to be vacant there with a second floor uh, able to do some type of housing and stuff like that. So I think it brings a lot of opportunities. And as developers from San Diego, mm -hmm. where they've developed this in Los Angeles, begin to hear, hey, Calexico has a mixed use, I think this will sprawl development in, in our area. Commissioner Cardenas, any? Discussions? No. I, I think you, uh, 
This is Commissioner Uribe's first meeting. Maybe you can explain to him what mm -hmm. we're trying to do on the, on the mixed use, yes. the concept of it. Yeah, this has been an interest of uh, not only the planning commissioner, but also the city council, uh, and even some of the property owners on 2nd Street that they want to utilize the 2nd story, uh, not so much as, as commercial, uh, retail, but as residential. Uh, this is something that used to exist uh, before the 80s, I think. I, I came in 89 and there was some, some uh, uh, residential apartments, I remember. 50s, 60s, 70s, yeah. all the way up to and, and so it's something that was very, uh, not only beneficial, but also profitable uh, uh, to a lot of the uh, retailers on the downtown area. It helped a lot because you had people living in the second level, you had your commercial on the, on the first level, and so the, the, the uh, people would, would purchase from, from the downtown area, they would live there, it created more of a foot traffic in there, which invited and, and enticed people to come in. This is something that we feel that we need to put back uh, uh, in the uh, uh, Second Street, uh, uh, commercial area, and basically back in April of 2016, this was presented to the planning commissioners at that time. And uh, also, we, uh, we've been working on, on uh, updating our, our uh, zoning ordinance, and there's a section in there, we went ahead and put that in there for, for your, your review and it talks about mixed use and, and changing the zoning uh, uh, to, from, from commercial to business to, to mixed use. So basically we, we brought this before you so you got something to look at. What I would like to recommend is uh, hold a, a uh, public meeting, not a public hearing, but a public meeting, invite the bid, the merchant from downtown, and get, uh, as well as the council members, and, and get input and ideas as what they think should go in there. Uh, if you look on, on page 83, it, it gives you uh, some of the uses that can be done within that area, uh, what would be permitted and what wouldn't. Um, so there's quite a few things that, that could be done in there. Uh, and again, one of the biggest thing is that uh, Calexico uh, has a large uh, population uh, of people that come over from uh, Mexicali. Uh, also, they have a large population of employees that work, for example, Border Patrol uh, teachers that, that come in. They, they may be from out of town. They could utilize th that area there, which would be very uh, useful for them and something that would be very helpful. Is there a map of from what, from where to where this would happen? Yes, there, there is a map. We don't have it here, unfortunately. I apologize for that. But there is a map, and, and this map could be presented at the public, public, public meeting that would indicate what is the downtown uh, area. We also have a downtown design uh, uh, for, <coughs> for that area. And so these things could be, all this material could be presented so that everybody could. Currently from what street would it start? Well, it, it'll run east from 1st Street, and I think it goes all the way down to 4th Street. And then it runs from Imperial, and it goes, uh, I think, to Mary, America, if I'm not right. mistaken. Mary. So it, it's, a, it's a pretty good size uh, area there. Okay. Currently, only the J.C. Penney building really has a second exactly. story to do anything. No, I'm sorry. Uh, there is the, the J.C. Uh, Penney uh, building, which takes that corner. You go to, Rock, I think it's Rockwood and 2nd Street. I think it was the old oh, uh, McMahon's. Right, McMahon's yeah. yeah, that has a, a second level. Uh, you go over to Melrose building. That has a second story. So there's, there's quite a few. The other thing, too, that uh, well, some of those buildings the down... The Crest Building also as well. The Crest Building has one, yeah. I think I'm they even go three stories. On second and on first. Yeah. So, yeah, on First Street, there's one that has three stories mm -hmm. in there. So there, there's quite a few buildings. And, and uh, some of the other buildings that are single story, uh, I think they may be retrofitted to 
built. To support a second story. So there, there's quite a bit to be uh, utilized there. And this would only be for a second story or even because some of those buildings also have basements? basements? Yes. Well, the, the, the basements, I, I don't think you want to use it residential. You could continue to use it as, as, as uh, retail, but the second story would be more for, for residential. Huh. But again, you know, to, to get more input and everything, and, and maybe there, somebody would come up with a good idea about the, the basement. So I'm not saying that it cannot be used. Um, this, this would be something where we have a public meeting and those comments could come up. And, not again, not knowing, being fairly new. Uh, not th this would not be done on any of the first story, right? On just the, the level. first story for the most part, you want to keep it as as commercial as retail. But is that how it? Yeah, how and this then the, the second story would be the the residential. That's usually the way it works. Okay. More comments for the commissioners, Ulises, Cardenas, no. The only comments I wanted to make was um, <clears throat> I was reading about uh, Desert Hot Springs that they filed bankruptcy uh, you know, not too long ago, maybe three, four years ago. And then when they passed the uh, medicinal manufacturing, now they're booming, busting, and business doing great. I would like to see that happening once we get moving along with when they start. I feel that that's going to happen to us here. All we have to do is follow what other cities are doing and we should just follow because they've done all of the grud work. Mm -hmm. And we, we just would just kind of learn from that. And I, I don't know, we should go out there and visit, talk to some of the other city, you know, uh, officials to see how and what ideas they have. I know they don't have one, but San Diego has been doing that. You know, the hotel, motel kind of stuff, one bedroom studios. Mm -hmm. They got lofts, you know, that maybe could be prospects for buyers to just buy a loft, you know, to do their artwork or, you know, businesses. That's in, in San Diego, and that could be a possibility of, you know, bringing in business. I feel that we're going to probably start changing, so we have to start changing our mentality that we can probably start thinking that we, any square footage that we have that is not being used, we can use because we don't have any building going on. There's no housing. For our low and middle income people, we just, there's no housing. One or two bedrooms, nothing. And there's, everybody's suffering. And everybody's going to Imperial, everybody's going to Heber, everybody's going to El Centro because there's nothing here. And we gotta do something, otherwise we're gonna, you know, be in the red, I believe. So I think we start thinking, put our thinking hats on and maybe have some meetings like you're saying, public hearings, commissioners have a, sh a workshop to start discussing, bringing out ideas, kind of, pick our brains, everybody start, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and I don't know, what's, that's my thoughts. Uh, this was brought to city council, and the, the reason we bring this up is uh -huh. because we have to think outside the box. Yes. We are in the red, deeply in the red. Yes. And uh, our, our city services are suffering adversely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've only been on council for over a year, but if you look at the history, we haven't been this much in the red consistently. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to go back, I mm -hmm. mean, decades in this in this case. And Alec, you, you've been a city council member in the past. I don't think you've ever seen it this bad. No, we, we left you money. <laughs> you didn't leave me money. <laughs> you didn't leave me money. <laughs> you left me a hot seat, that's for sure. <laughs> but the, the reason yeah. for this makes use is exactly that. We're trying to think outside the box. Yes. Uh, we're trying to see what we can bring in. Um, if, as you saw in the newspaper, uh, we finally got uh, face to appropriate it, $273 million, I believe. It still has to be approved by Congress, but we're keeping our fingers crossed. What that will do is increase the lanes from 10 to 16 uh, commercially. It will also increase, uh, I'm sorry, we will have a complete redevelopment of the existing pedestrian port of entry. So that's going to increase foot traffic. What we're trying to do here is try to capture those dollars before they go to El Centro, San Diego, et cetera, and try to capture them, not just in the downtown area, but in Calexico in general. If you drive through Calexico, how many empty buildings do we see? Yep. And it's getting worse with yes. JCPenney, as you yes. say. That's a huge yeah. building. Correct. Uh, and what we're trying to do is try to think outside the box and try to bring business in to lure those dollars in. So. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You know what? Uh, I guess back when we were growing up, the same recipe was done. And, you know, we had housing downtown, and we had the major chains downtown. I remember the Crest stores 
Woolworth, uh, Rexall. You know, we had big stores, and they were in downtown Western Auto. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know the dynamic changed. And it looks like when it changed, you know, bodies started leaving. So I think this will be uh, probably a big opportunity for us to, you know, Imperial just did it in their downtown area. So uh, I think we, uh, we move on something like that. We start having our public hearings. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, you know, a time schedule with our public hearings because sometimes we go on too long. And I think time is of the essence, you know, for our city that the faster we get involved in this and get it done and start in action, it'll be better. And also, you know, start, uh, uh, I would encourage that uh, we Im invite the Economic Development uh, Commission and also the director. And, you know, uh, we need a, a used car salesman selling to Lexico. <laughs> he needs to go to San Diego and see what they did there and how we can attract those people over here. Uh, I, I think Calexico can be the jewel of the valley the way it was many years ago. Uh, remember when your mother was working at the insurance place? Uh, you know, it was, it was another Calexico, and we can, we can bring that back. Yes, sir. Come on. Uh, and I agree with you completely, and that's the whole point of what we're trying to do. Uh, I look at two cities, and obviously they're far above where we're at now, actually three. You look at El Paso, Texas, and their success. Their border community is, is Ciudad Juarez, which in no way compares viol in violence or in, in a crime standpoint to Mexicali. One. Two, you look at uh, the Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica and how it's completely benefited the city of Santa Monica and the surrounding area. Again, a little bit higher up in the food chain, but similar con in concept. And then the, the jewel of the jewels is, is downtown San Diego through the Center City Development Corporation, which is a quasi-private public partnership and how successful they've been. Uh, it started with, um, mm -hmm. I, I forgot the name of the, of the mall that is now suffering, unfortunately, but uh, the Horde Plaza. It started with Horde Plaza and just expanded all over the place. Uh, it's funny that now the original jewel, which was Horde Plaza, is now not doing too good. But the point I'm trying to make is, even though Calexico's, it needs to be taken a few notches down because of our economic environment, can we bring in a Ross? Can we bring in a Marshalls? Can we bring in a, a, a Starbucks? Can we bring in um, a couple of, of uh, quasi-fast food or, or other restaurants? And, and obviously change that atmosphere in downtown from empty buildings to that busy, uh, no parking type of atmosphere that we had in the 80s and even the 90s. That's really the, the, the crust of, of, of what we're trying to make and where we, we want to build it again. Rome wasn't built in a day. You start putting the seats today to build it tomorrow. This is, again, the, a step in the right direction. Okay, thank you. Okay, so any more comments? Okay, so close for a discussion. So we have uh, our next item, informational items. And for a planning commission attendance record. And uh, we're next to uh, staff comments. No, we're gonna... Okay, on the mixed use? Okay. The purpose of the discussion item is just to give direction, so we don't really need to make any formal. Okay, so then uh, my last comment will be let's move on. Let's not, uh, you know, a lot of times we spend too much time putting commissions, this and that, but let's move on it, let's do it. You know, so your next step would be? Our next step would be to, to schedule a public, public meeting, public meeting. or scoping meeting so that we can invite everybody, get comments, and then from there, then we could start working on the uh, rezoning of 2nd of, uh, Street or the downtown area. And how soon would that be? Do you think you anticipate a public meeting? For a public, uh, public meeting, probably uh, about two, three weeks. Two, two, three? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we are continuing to informational items, number four. Planning Commission attendance record. We need to vote or anything there. Okay. Any staff comments?
Ralph? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Any staff comments, Ralph? No. Okay. No. All right. You want so, to no, no staff comments. So, uh, planning commissioners' comments. Commissioner. I have one question, uh, Ralph. Uh, at my last city council meeting, I saw a lot of projects on the board. Uh, is that really true? Are we seeing all these projects well, coming in? We, we, we do have a lot of, there's a lot of projects. The thing is, is that you have your concrete project, those that you don't That's what I'm asking, the concrete project. Concrete project. Yeah. Um, we do have, um, uh, some there's about five six concrete projects. Uh, we got the uh, McDonald's that's being reconstructed, which is going to be good for the city. We got the the uh, Federal Union. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, the the construction of uh, El Portal that, that's coming in. Uh, we got Trinity, you know, the cannabis um, that are also coming in. Uh, share with you about family dollars coming in. Uh, they submitted plans. They're going down uh, to Second Street. So, in the ninety-nine cents. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, the competition. Oh, great. Um, and we have some very positive uh, uh, contacts. I've, I've, uh, uh, I got a meeting with the owner of um, uh, one that owns properties over on. Give me a second. Let me think. Uh, I can't think of the name. It's over. Uh, on the uh, properties, I can't think of it. Uh, next to Sunset uh, and Cole Road, uh, which is uh, Cole and Sunset. Anyway, it's all about the tracks. Oh, I oh okay. For, uh, town Center. Okay. That came to me. Uh, so uh, that's very uh, promising. I've gotten some calls of, of people that are ready to come down and start submitting applications for more uh, uh, buildings for the cannabis. Uh, it, it, not that the cannabis is great for the city, but what we're looking at is the, those type of business bringing, enticing other business, because what they're going to do, they're going to improve the area. They're, they're going to build buildings that are going to be attractive. And that's going to bring other businesses that want to be next to those attractive buildings. So that's what we're, you know, what we're aiming at. Uh, not that we want to be the cannabis uh, 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 cultivators of, of, of Imperial Valley, but, but our, our plan is to do that. Um, even on Second Street, I, I've been uh, texting or, or emailing with an owner on Second Street that has an idea that what he wants to do. He wants to build, but before he builds, he, he's got some idea of what he wants to do so he can get his business going and, and see how it's going to work. So th there's a lot of promising things that are, that are coming. Some of, the, some of the, the, the projects are still on the board, drawing board. Uh, people are coming in. We're, we're trying to work with them and entice them to come in. Uh, we got uh, another 43, 46 uh, apartments that we've, I've been talking to the property owner, uh, and he's trying to get some prices to go to, to the bank to, to build. So the, the, there are projects that, that uh, people are coming in. Uh, you were concerned about low-income housing. Uh, we have a developer that is also looking in, in building 60 units. Uh, for low-income uh, uh, families, and so... Uh, Is that in uh, Tierra Blanca, what's it called? Uh, Tierra Santa? Or? No, this is... Um, I can't remember the name. Now, yeah, these people from San Diego and LA, they come in, they, they come in with these weird Spanish names that even I can't pronounce, so I don't even know what the definition is. Yeah, I heard on Coal Road also next uh, west, El Portal, the 27 acres, that was recently bought by somebody. Have they come to the city? No, they haven't come to the city as of yet. I think they'll probably bring a project. So yeah. uh, everything looks promising, so it's, it's good. Yeah. We, we, we just need to stay on top of it, and we try to do as much as we can with, with the staff that we can. We're, we're, 
you know, you, you, you've got your, your uh, like myself, I, I wear like three, four hats, and so it's hard to stay on top of everything that's going on. But we are working hard. We've we got a good staff, and, and so um, we will do everything in our power to, to entice them to come in and do what we can. We're still hoping on the IHOP. There's an IHOP restaurant that we're, we're looking at that we're hoping they're still going to come in. The last I heard, uh, the owners is talking to the owners of IHOP and, and uh, uh, Dairy Queen, I guess it is. And so that still is promising. So we have promises out there. And, and it's true, everything that you saw out there, not everything is concrete, but those are, are projects that we're looking at. And, and hopefully if we can get half of them to, to commit, then I think we'll be doing very well. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, taking advantage that you're here, uh, Councilman Escobar, a lot has to do with the city council. I think in the last few years, uh, the new council have brought a little stability, and the investors are seeing that. So for a while, they were very skeptical of investing money in Calexico, and now I see that they're coming back. So uh, I congratulate you and I commend you and the city council that uh, they're uh, bringing uh, confidence back to investors. I think it's a team effort. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, just a couple of comments. I do want to commend uh, Ralph and um, that uh, and Mark. 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 I always forget Mark. Huh, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> you never speak, Mark. You never come to the podium and talk to us. But anyway, um, I just want to. I, I don't know how you guys are doing it because I know you're getting a lot of more workload from what we had in the past. I don't even know how you're doing it. Who is making the first contacts with the developers start calling? Is it Mr. Figueroa, that the, the assistant? Mr. Figueroa will, will, will get uh, the contacts. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that I get are, mm -hmm. are developers that are interested, wanting to know what they can build, uh, what, what are the requirements, what are the steps that need to be taken. Uh, that's where I have the privilege of being able to talk to a lot of these developers. Um, for the most part, what we do is once, if they, if they come to our department and we talk to them, then what we do is we get the team together, and, and that is including Mr. Figueroa, uh, Mr. Dale, uh, ourselves, uh, and uh, engineering, fire and police, and we get that group. That is what we call the project review committee. Project. So we get them together, we sit down with the developer, and then we answer any questions that the developer may have. And also in turn, what we do is we also inform the developer what we want from them. And so once the developer leaves, he knows exactly what he has to do. So he doesn't have to come back and go visit every department, but he meets with everybody. And uh, so that makes everything a lot easier. So I think it's a, a, a team effort. It, it, Mr. Figueroa being the economic person, then he's the or runner, the, the, the front person, but air, all the other departments have also a, a uh, um, uh, something to, to, to provide and, and, and help the developers as well. Okay, well thank you, Ralph. And I just don't wanna say that, I don't know how you guys are doing it, but anyway, thank you so much for helping us and trying to get this you know, project going on and making it work. Alrighty, I guess that's it. So, Adjourned, meeting adjourned.